Caddis Maximus here. Going to do a couple videos about the Ronell Milwaukee 1600 series. This happens to be the 1660, which is the 450 RPM version. They had the 1650, which was 600 RPM. They even had, I believe, like the 1600 or the 1610, which is 1,000 RPM. But it was always this one. It was always the 1660-1. And people get confused about the dashes. The dash 6 on Milwaukee tools never actually appears on the tool itself. The dash 6 just des designates the kit box set. But the tools are always a dash one or without a dash. These are the half inch drive compact super hole shooter drill. This one was made in the late 90s. Milwaukee doesn't do like type one, type two. What they do is they designate it by serial number series. Milwaukee has part diagrams and wiring diagrams, manuals on their website for tools all the way back from the late 60s or early 70s. It's one of the Nice things about Milwaukee is they make documentation over for everything they make for more than a half a century. These came out in 1983 as far as the 1660 series, but this compact body drill has been made since I think somewhere around the 50s or something as other uh, model numbers. But the modern ones when they stopped uh, increasing the power were 7 amps at uh, 450 RPM. They still make them. They're made in China. They're about 220 bucks if you want the variable speed version. It's like $260. And other manufacturers' competition uh, was great. They A lot of uh, good drills that were similar to the Milwaukee's, but they all kind of fell away and left it. Basically, Milwaukee being the last company making these Super Duty drills. And they didn't change. Once they hit 7 amps, they decided that was just enough power, and they've remained that way for you know 30 years or something. They've just had 7 amp motors. Triple gear reduction, proper industrial Jacobs chuck, 5.8 spindle, so extra heavy duty spindle to prevent it from getting bent. And a uh, long story short, part of how I started this YouTube channel is I was selling all my stuff. I had a blood clot in my leg. I had more than $10,000 in hospital bills and was selling all my tools inside, you know, there's a lot of tools that there just isn't very many videos of, so I was just adding them to YouTube, decided I might as well document some of the stuff while I'm selling it. And looking through my channel, I had already sold the last of my super hole shooters uh, before I started my YouTube channel, so this is kind of bittersweet because now I've picked up a drill that uh, I was selling that kind of prompted me to start my YouTube channel in the first place. I did get a good deal, $18, more than worth it. You may notice this is corrosion, so it was probably left in a barn or something. But surprisingly enough, the Jacob's truck, <laughs> I do need to lube it. I'm going to do a uh, service video of my next video so to prevent this review from being too long. Anyway, these are the Super Duty Milwaukee's. They kind of use this. This is a relatively standard switch design, especially for Milwaukee and certain DeWalt and other manufacturers' tools. But it's a little bit more proprietary. And if you want to ask me... What I ended up doing is I have this DeWalt DW131. DeWalt does not make this anymore. They haven't made it for probably 10 years or something. Uh, but this is the one I'd say because the DW131s were also a renowned drill. Milwaukee and Black & Decker are basically in drill wars for since the 1950s or something. A real long time. And this Black & Decker and then this <laughs> DeWalt version was just more elegant. Just a more smooth body. More rounded handle, more ergonomics. They use a standard uh, heavy-duty toggle switch for the reverse, which allows them to use a real standard trigger that's just using saws and all sorts of power tools, so it was actually easier for it to service. More ergonomic handle, and they still have the lockout button, which this Milwaukee doesn't. <laughs> really early ones some uh, in the 80s and earlier did, but due to the dangers of accidentally hitting that trigger lock, and severely injuring yourself they stopped doing it but DeWalt still and Black & Decker still kept it but they have this huge bump right here to really make sure that it, you do not accidentally hit it but I kept this unit because these are a little more rare and quite frankly just a little bit better but Black and or which is now Stanley Black & Decker DeWalt decided that you know this whole design right down to its old school steel fan was just going to be too expensive and they were going to have to try to sell these for like 300 bucks or more. And they decided that they weren't going to make enough sales. So they just decided to discontinue them. So that's kind of the deal. <clears throat> the wall ended up replacing them with this, the DW130 and the 130V. Like this, the, the variable speed version. And these just 
aren't as nice as those old 130s. So as far as available today, I'd still take a Chinese Super Hole Shooter over the DeWalt DW130V. This is just, it's an okay drill, but it's just cheapified. So anyway, this was Milwaukee's famous mixing drill. And all you have to do is give them a quick run to know if it really is decent. Really pretty darn nice. Really smooth, pretty quiet. And what is surprising is how well the whole hog, ugh, this beastle, this thing is heavy. It is higher torque, 7.5 amps at a 300 RPM in low gear and 1200 in the high gear. So these things are like $350. And what's really surprising is they are more compact. They will end up getting in between studs and joists uh, with a self-feed bit or something like that. But they're really, it was only about four or five inches of difference between a whole hog and one of these super hole shooters. And so since people like electricians and plumbers really that made the difference is why the whole hogs seem to sell so much better uh, than even these super hole shooters. It's a little bit of extra versatility. But you can certainly save a lot of money if you just needed a heavy duty drill, uh, particularly for mixing in this large hole making where you don't need to fit it in between joists, rafters, studs, that type of stuff in construction. And these were by far the most commonly sold. I probably had maybe six of them total in my life including this one and it just give yourself enough patience and they will turn up so anyway i'm gonna finish this off drill a couple holes with a uh 2 and 9 16 self feed bit just to give it a loaded run so you can hear it and then in the next video i'm just going to do a basic service inspect the brushes and just open this port down here this cover take a look at the commutator double check the grease and the gears it looks like this has been opened up at least once and as a power cord issue, I'm not going to do the contractor's repair where I just wrap a bunch of tape around it. I'm probably just going to cut the cord down and rewire it in there. And part of why I'm doing this demo, this review before servicing is just to show, you know, as long as you can get electricity, these old Milwaukee drills, they're just as reliable as any hand tool. But power tools are seen as disposable wear items or hand tools are not. And it's just a little disappointing. Got this block of wood braced. Do my top handle, I'm going to take that back handle, brace it against my leg, and uh, actually I'll probably brace it this way. Let's give her a go. It barely even notices, and that's a 2 and 9 16 self-feed bit. So anyway, that is a renowned, particularly the Milwaukee, the 450 RPM 7 amp Milwaukee 1660 compact super hole shooter drill. You can see how driving that bit, the gear sounded really smooth, no laboring. Just slow down in speed a little bit. Remember, a fully loaded drill will slow down by a third. Old school Milwaukee's actually used to have two RPMs, that which would be the no load speed and the fully loaded speed. The fully loaded speed on this drill is like 330 RPM. The it, 450 is actually the no load speed. And we certainly weren't bogging it down that much. Not even close. You could probably get away with driving a four and uh, <laughs> five eighths self feed bit. Giant ones for uh, toilet drainages. But still an absolutely awesome drill. So if you find one of these at a garage sale or something, these are surprisingly common. Uh, not, I don't think quite as common as the whole hogs, but whole hogs are just so overpriced on the used market, it's insane. And if you don't need something that's specifically that compact, get a 1660. This thing will do everything you need it to, as far as a half inch drill is concerned. Uh, and if you really need more power than this, then you got to go with the three quarter inch. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Till next time, Caddis Maximus out.